In today's video, we're going to see how easy it is to set up TailScale as a subnet router on your Windows system so that you can securely gain access to the devices on your network, such as your NAS unit, security cameras, or remote access to your computers. To learn how to do this, stick around for the rest of this video. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you find this video useful. Back in January of 2022, I did a video on setting up a subnet router on a Linux machine and demonstrated how you could securely gain access to all your devices on your home network. At the time of that video, subnet routers were only available on the Linux version, but current versions have enabled this feature on both Windows and Mac. Though running it on a Windows or Mac machine does not have feature parity with the Linux version, and there is a small performance difference. Running it on Windows for most people is not only easier, but offers all you need for a home or small business environment. It's a perfect solution to use to securely gain access to your security cameras, your storage, or your home automation. I won't go far into the weeds, but let's quickly discuss the differences between running it on a Windows or Mac machine and running it on Linux, just to have a little bit of background. TailScale acts as a subnet router or an exit node in one of two different modes. The kernel mode, which is native on Linux, and the user space mode, which is the default for all non-Linux devices such as Windows or Mac. In kernel mode, the operating system itself forwards the packets. For example, an encrypted WireGuard packet arrives at the kernel and gets forwarded to TailScale to decrypt. TailScale then returns the decrypted packet to the kernel, which is forwarded to the relevant target device. In this mode, TailScale doesn't rewrite the IP packets. TCP streams are end-to-end -end from the origin, and all IP protocols are supported. TailScale can also run in user space mode, which is what's available on Windows or Mac or non-Linux systems. In this mode, TailScale terminates TCP and UDP connections from the source and makes a new outbound connection to the target from the subnet router, stitching everything back together. In other words, it almost acts as a real-time compiler. These two different modes have slightly different hardware requirements with user space having a slight latency and requiring slightly more CPU and memory than the native kernel mode and from Linux. For home users and small businesses, either will perform well, but as a general rule, kernel mode is better suited for really heavy use and high bandwidth needs. That said, the user space mode, which is all that's available on a Windows or Mac system, should be more than fine for smaller number of users and lower bandwidth needs. Now that we have a little bit of background on the difference, let's get into how easy it is to set up a subnet router in Windows. I'll also leave a link to my earlier video if you'd prefer to set it up in Linux. If you've already used TailScale, then you know how easy it is to install. But if you haven't, just go to tailscale.com click on download and get the appropriate version that you need. In my case, I'm going to download the Windows version for this video. Once the download is complete, open and run the file and follow the prompts to install it. When the installation is completed, you'll get a prompt in the lower right hand corner to authenticate that particular system. Assuming that you already have an account, you'll be requested to connect and authenticate the device. If you don't, you'll need to create one. When you're done, you'll be taken to the admin console where you can see the system that was just added. If you go over to their document section and search for subnet router, you'll find the document on subnet routers and traffic nodes, which can provide you with additional information, as well as show us the commands that we need to activate the subnet router. There are separate instructions based on the OS that you're running, but for this video, we're going to use the Windows commands. Refer to my other video for instructions on the Linux version. The easiest way to input this command is to highlight and copy it from the website and paste it into a notepad or any text editor, and then modify it to match your network. In my case, I'm going to modify the IP range to fit my particular network and use 192.168.0.0 slash 24 and 192.168.100.0 slash 24. If you're running more VLANs, you can append them to the end of the statement separated by a comma. And if you only have one network, and then of course just use the one IP range. When you've finished modifying this command, highlight it and copy it and open up a command prompt and just paste it into the command prompt. When you hit enter in just a second or so, it'll complete the command. You only need to do this once as the settings will stay in the system even if you reboot the system. 
Now log into your admin console and you'll see the word subnets under the computer that you just added. If we click on the triple dots on the right hand side and select edit route settings, you'll now be able to see each of the subnets that you enabled from the command prompt. From here, we can now enable one or both of the subnets. You'll also get a warning that key expiry is enabled. So once we finish enabling our routes, we need to go back to the admin console, go back to the triple dots and select disable key expiry. As this is a subnet router and we don't want it to change when we're away. We should now be good to go and we can now test the subnet router to make sure that it works the way it's supposed to. From a remote location using a laptop or a computer with Tailscale installed on it, I'm able to go on any of the IP addresses on my home network and be able to access them just as if I was at home. Remember to use the IP address when you're accessing a device as names may not work. As you can see here, I can click on both of my NAS units and see the contents. I'm also able to log into any device such as my Unraid server or my TrueNAS server just as if I was at home on my LAN. If you install Tailscale app on your mobile devices and you're using an app such as Blue Iris, which requires third-party solutions to securely access your devices such as your security cameras, I can now configure the app to just use a local IP address and Tailscale will encrypt the traffic and I'll be able to access it wherever I'm at without any other configuration or third-party solutions. I've been a huge fan of Tailscale since its release and I use it every single day to access NAS units, configured devices such as Home Assistant, data configuration screens, security cameras, and it's become an invaluable tool in my day-to-day -day activities. I can access anything I want. I don't have to worry about multiple configurations, port forwards, or any third-party solutions. That's about it for today's video, and I hope you liked it. Remember to subscribe and hit that like button if you found this useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.